Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. As you can see, I have a Christmas train. Yay! <laughs> I have been waiting to do this and I am just so pleased with how it's turned out. I'm going to show you how to make all of this. It is so, so simple. It really is easy. There's just lots to it. So you need to watch the tutorial, give yourself an afternoon or a long morning and you will be able to make this. Now, I you can make this as long as you want. You, the carriages are all the same, so you could just carry on and carry on and carry on. I've just done these two carriages and then the main train. So if I just turn it up now this way, you can see I've made it so that these are little hinges, so you can obviously shape it. So if you do want to have more and you want to have a circle of them, maybe around your tree or running along a long sideboard or whatever it is that you have. But I'm going to fill these with candy cane. So on the front here, you can see it says candy cane wishes, mistletoe kisses. And this here lifts off and it's another little storage box. So there are actually three of the same. This is what I mean. You can see they're just three carriages. They're all the same, but it's just the way that you decorate it. But the end one here, I always have at Christmas time, you know, when you, you put your Christmas lights on, you always get a few little spare bulbs and you get maybe get a couple of strings extra for like hanging baubles. There's just bits and I always want something to put them in. So this is gonna be for that. And then these are gonna have candy canes in them, which I love to eat. So yeah, this is my Santa's candy train and I love it. I've put a little bit of, if I bring this up closer here, there's some little bit of wadding, which I do, I should stick actually, but that's just sat in there just to look like steam. And on the very front here, you can see there, and I've put these little embellishments to kind of look like lights. But I mean, you can, that kind of thing, you can decorate however you want. And really close up on the wheels, they have that little hardware that I've used before, the little stamping up. Um, they look like little rivets and screws and things. That one there's got stars on. And then I've just got the bows, my favourite sprig dies, and some bells. And it is adorable. It's so strong. These have all been reinforced and yeah, I'm using my favourite craft card and they match my lanterns and my mini lanterns. That's why I've stuck with this traditional colour, which is what I love anyway, and that's what my Christmas colours are. So yeah, let's have fun and make this a really cool project. Okay, so first of all, you're gonna need a piece of 11 by eight and a quarter. I'm using the craft card. This is 300 GSM and it's just so strong. It's just brilliant for these more um, uh, rigid kind of projects, things that you want to last a long time, then I always like to use the craft card. Now, how, um, how many pieces of this is completely up to you. So whether you're making the train or the carriages, this is the size that you will need. So if you just wanna make the train, the main bit at the front, just one piece if you just want the train and one carriage then you'll need two and if you want a whole kind of you know really long train then you can have as many as you want so the scoring I do now will be the same on every single one so along the eight and a quarter inch side you just want to score at three inches and at five and a quarter so that will give you a three inch side okay and then rotate it onto the 11 and you're going to again score at three and eight. So again, you've got a three inch on each side. Then flip it back along the eight and a quarter inch side and you're gonna score at two and a half, just down to the first score line, okay? And then five and three quarters, just down to the first score line. So you're creating these two half inch tabs, okay? Then flip the card over, so you've got the other eight and a quarter inch side now at the top and again score at two and a half just down to that first score line and at five and three quarters it doesn't matter that the score lines are reversed because these are actually just going to be cut lines okay so you can just see there that's what you should have so along your short eight and a quarter inch side you want to have these score lines just going to the first one and again here and then that's it in that profile Okay, remove the scoreboard. And then next you just wanna burnish all of these score lines. Okay, so that's my score lines burnished. Next you need to cut down the, if you're long the long inch side, the long inch, the long side here, you wanna cut right down, going past make sure I get a nice cut because this is all going to be shown going past that little half inch one just to the corner okay so you can see there I've just cut past it 
to the, this square in the middle is your base, okay, so I've just cut to the corner, alright, just here of that base. I'm going to go along to this one here and do the same, so just cut down until you get to the, the corner there. And then you want to cut down that score line, that half inch score line, so I'm now going to cut down that score line, not this one. And you basically want to give yourself, you're creating that tab. So now, because we burnished that earlier, that will be glued and stick the side of our box together. Okay, so then go down to that other end and cut down again that half inch score line. Okay, so now on that long side, I've got these two tabs. And rotate the whole thing round and do the same. So just cut straight down. Now keep all of these because these are going to be handy when we go to make your wheels and just other maybe embellishments you want to use. So depending on what colour cardstock, keep all these bits at the minute. So now that's what you should have with these two half inch tabs on each side. And then I'm just going to grab my snips and just take off. You don't need to really worry about the bottom ones but certainly the top ones there. Just take off a little wedge. Not too much but just enough so that it won't overhang like so okay so now we're going to stick it down so with it facing up that's inside this is the outer side I'm just going to run glue on the half inch tab so if you've got double sided tape then go around and obviously pop that on all four making sure that you focus on nearer to the score line and not this outer side because it's the score line kind of bit that you're going to see so then fold it down and bring up one of your sides and you know I can see bits of glue there but it's fine I mean this dries completely clear anyway but you want to make sure that that really does join really nicely on the corner there so whether you, like I said you're using red tape double sided tape make sure you do get it quite close to that score line without it going over because you don't want it to be exposed but you can see now I've got a really nice corner to my box and I'll just go across to the next one okay and then bring that one up so then just do the same at that end. Okay, so that is the main base for whatever it is that you're going to be making. Now because I'm using the craft card and because of what it is that I'm making, I want to distress this. So I'm going to be using the Distress Oxide um, Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. And I just really like this with the craft card. I've used it on my Traveller's Notebook, my mini albums, whenever I use the craft card. And I want that kind of, you know old vintage train look and my Christmas is traditional and I do have some vintage and antique decorations and things like that so I just wanted to kind of keep everything tied together so you can see there that side compared to that side so if you're going to distress you just need to remember to make sure that you do it on on everything that you do right down to any little embellishments of the same card I mean obviously if you're going to be using blacks and reds and whites then you don't necessarily need to distress that but certainly this so I'm just going to carry on and finish this okay so that's that one all distressed now now I've also gone ahead and I've cut these strips here now everything I'm doing you're going to need six of them and six of them yeah okay so these measure three quarters of an inch by five and I've used them so these are the carriages that I've already done okay and on underneath the black there can you see this strip so there's a craft card strip, a black strip, a red strip and a white strip. That's all completely optional but I would say do the brown craft strip. So whatever card you're using do this extra strip because that strip and then the black inside have made this just as strong as chipboard. I mean it's about two mil thick and it is so strong so it's it yeah it's advisable if you want it to um, to obviously be very strong and last but also I do think it it does add something to it as well. So now this one is the going to be the main front of the train so rather than have it on the front so this is how you will stick it okay on the two carriages so the ones I've just shown you then but on this one I'm going to cut it I'm going to stick it inside because we're going to be having the lid on top of this which is going to be a black lid and it's going to come down over this so it will give it strength anyway but these ones here I'm going to still just reinforce just the inside top there um, you may want to put, you know, bigger 
kind of sides in there and stuff but I don't think it's necessary but certainly just at the top there so like I said you'll need six pieces of that one and then the shorter one here again is the same width three quarters but it is two and a quarter so it's just the width here and here okay so I'm going to go and do those okay so I've popped all those bits inside there so already that's starting to strengthen up a bit more um, like I said you will go around and pop them on the outside of these two and on the inside of this one. I'll talk you through all of these um, measurements later but for the black ones inside they are the same measurement as the outside ones but you will have to just cut off a tiny bit on either the shorter ones or the long ones when you put them in. You'll see when you put them in they don't, they're just a little bit too long. You just have to just cut off a little bit. So again, you'll see that when you do it. Okay, so to make the lid, you need a piece of five and three eighths of an inch by eight and one eighth of an inch. And you're basically gonna score along the short inch, <laughs> short inch, along the short side first, you wanna score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, three and seven eighths of an inch, and four and five eighths of an inch. Then rotate it and you're then gonna score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, six and five eighths of an inch, and seven and three eighths of an inch. Okay, then you wanna go ahead, so that's what you should have. Okay, and then you're gonna go and burnish all those score lines. Okay, and then we're just gonna do some cutting. So along the short side, you'll have these four squares in each corner, okay? You're gonna cut down both of those score lines to the second score line. So there's your first, there's your second. And then again, just cut down like so. And then this side, cut down and cut down. Then the two on the outer side, you're gonna remove completely. Okay, and again, this one here, like so. Then these two here, you're gonna take the top one. So then all you're left with is just these two little squares here, all right? Then you just wanna tidy everything up. So just go around that one, just take a little wedge, take a little wedge out of those little square tabs, again from that side, and also this long one here. Only the outer pieces, you're not touching these inner sections. Then rotate the whole thing round and repeat exactly the same as what you just did here. Okay, so that's now what you should have. Next you need to glue it all down, so you just want to start with the bottom facing up. So this is the inside, so we're working on this side and you just want to pop glue on the little tabs. Okay, fold the tab in and bring up the side and stick it together. So you're creating that really nice right angle and that corner to the top of your lid. Okay, so just hold that down so it's all nice and stuck. Okay, so that's one corner. Then again, go to this next section and again, fold it down, tuck it under and just bring everything around like so. So now we've got that end. So just repeat that again at the other end. Okay, so that is all of the sides stuck together. Now we need to stick these reinforced pieces down. So just kind of bend them out slightly, not too far because you don't want to crack anything, and just pop some glue just inside, like so, and then fold it in, pop it on its side, and then with your bone folder, just go in and spread all that glue out. And also, this will just mean that you get a really nice crisp side there. So just do that on all three. Okay, and there is the lid. So then grab your box and it should fit on perfectly. Okay, it should be quite snug. You should feel like the air come out the sides, which is what I always say. So that's now done, okay? Next, I'm gonna add my wheels because I find that by adding these, it kind of starts to bring it to life a bit more and start looking like what we want it to be. So I have gone ahead and done all the wheels because you, you really don't need to see me do it because this is very easy. But if you've got a circle punch or a few different sizes of circle punches, then that's really going to speed things up for you. Otherwise, you'll have to die cut these. So I had a, um, a punch. So for my larger, so this is one and a half. So you want to cut out 24. Now you don't have to, you could half that if you're not fussed 
about it being black on the inside because this is the side that's going to be stuck down but I just thought it just finished it nicely plus it gave it more strength because in between this I then went and cut 12 of the same size circle with my craft card so right in the middle here is a sheet of craft card so this brown here because that's really strong so now I mean that is it's solid and it just means that these really do stand up well so if you're going to put some stuff in there that's maybe a bit heavier that it's not going to you know they're not going to bow so that's what I've done there okay so work out what you want to do decide on what cardstock you want to use and stuff and then you'll know then on the inside I done my red circle is one inch so if you've got a one inch punch then you just want to go ahead and just punch out uh, 12 and then on the I had this other die and I just thought it looked like you know um, a hubcap kind of look and I just cut them out in white and then on top of that I've got these stamping up metal embellishments and I just thought that little bit of hardware just really kind of finished off the wheel so that's what I've done okay so see what you want to do but basically then when you go to stick them down it's entirely up to you where you want them I found though by having a little bit of the edges like if I just show you here do it that way so rather than having them like that I just thought it looked more like a kid's kind of pulley kind of little um, what's it called um, I don't know just it didn't look right but when you bring them in like that I thought it started to look more like a, a train effect you can have them a little bit further like that but can you see how different you can get it to look if you wanted to you could add more you could put three that's entirely up to you and then have a little black strip underneath as well so there's lots of ways to adapt this but I just wanted to keep it quite simple because I want it to match obviously those other things that I have so when you go to stick them down I know that I'm I'm keeping them the same as how I've stuck the rest down but once you've stuck one down they then all need to be the same as that one so I've just put glue on half then turn it over and then I'm just gonna tack it there for a second so I can remember how far I brought it in, yeah, five, five eighths of an inch. Yeah, so it's come in the right distance because I want them to all look the same. So I've got five eighths of an inch overhanging here. So just pop your ruler on top. And you want to do that on every wheel. Just put your ruler on top and make sure they're all the same. And then it comes in by five eighths. So it's coming in by five eighths of an inch here and it's got five eighths of an inch hanging down. That's what I've done. You might have, you know, half an inch or three quarters of an inch. It's entirely up to you. But now when you've stuck that one down, when you go to do your next one, you've got to do it exactly the same. Because otherwise when it stands up, it's going to be wonky. So again, I just need to make sure that I'm coming in here by five eighths and then underneath, perfect. Okay, so now when I stand that up, they're, they're both exactly the same. Okay, so go and see what you've got, hole punch, you know, dies, whatever and um, like I said layer them up mine I've got three layers that craft card in the middle and I did find that that really because initially I just done the black um, and one certainly isn't enough you do need to layer them up a bit so have a play around and see what works best for you but that is how I've done mine okay so that is now all my wheels done and that stands up perfectly it's not like rocking around or anything they all sit completely flush so now I've got my lid on now when you look at it it's just starting to come together a little bit more so next we want to make a square to go on top so for this piece here this is nine and a quarter by six and three quarters now I'm not this is going to be a solid cube I'm going to seal all of the sides if you want to have it as an open box and store more things in it you can by all means however I'm not because I've already got all the space in there plus the two other carriages I don't have a need for for this as well so along the longest side along that nine and a quarter you want to score at two and a quarter four and a half and six and three quarters and then nine then rotate your cardstock and you're going to score at two and a quarter and four and a half okay then burnish all of those score lines okay and then with your tab here flip it around that way you want to take out the two outer sides to it so I'm going to remove that piece and then and that piece okay and then all of the outer so you've now got one two three four one two three four all of those ones you want to cut down 
okay like so and then you want to take kind of wedges off of all but one on each side so for example I'm just going to because you don't you're going to be sticking this all down it will become a very strong cube which again is what I want for it to last so I'm going to do that one and then these two I'm going to leave the middle one as the last one that I will stick down that way you will have a nice perfect square side and all these other pieces will not overhang in any way you won't have any bits kind of sticking out so it doesn't matter how they don't have to be the same but you want something like that so that one I've kept perfect these ones have all taken a wedge out so just do that along that other side okay so that's now what I've got so these two have stayed the square and these have all got wedges okay so next flip it over fold in your tab and you want to add glue to that and then fold that whole piece in half and fold it over that tab because it should all perfectly line up okay so now we've got this and then you basically at each end you want to fold in all of the ones that we took your wedge out of and then that last one will fold perfectly over giving you a really nice square finish okay now I'm not going to glue all of them either I'm just going to glue the last one but make sure you glue these side bits here as well so see there because that's where the other bits underneath are kind of showing through but it doesn't really I mean you can glue it's just put a little bit there just to keep that down there we go but because nothing's going in this I'm not worried about having it all and I'll just flip it over just use my bone folder there okay and then do the same with the other end so I'm going to fold those two in just splodge I'll pop one there just for good measure there we go and then all on there and then stick that one down okay so that now is going to sit on top here it doesn't look like much at the minute but once we've got our kind of um, what's it called the chimney it's not a chimney what's that bit called anyway that bit there and we're gonna have another square on top and I'm also going to now put these windows so I'm gonna have this one and I've got more to add to this as well but I've done four to go on each side of this large square these ones here measure uh, one and a half okay so again if you've got a punch that's all I used and just find what bit of your kind of cube looks the nicest so I think I'm going to go for that one there so I know I want to add them on these four sides so I'm going to put a cross on the bottom because you're not going to see that that's what we're going to add our glue to and a little cross in the middle there on the top one because that's going to have another box stuck on top just so I remember now I just need to stick these on all four of my sides okay so that's now done there and then again that's going to go like this but we don't stick nothing down yet we're just going to make all the pieces all right okay so now i just wanted to create like some curtains and a window so i've just done this little thing here and when it's on top look i think it looks really cute and obviously we've got loads more to add to it still but to do that you just need to die cut the same size that you've cut your white square and do that in red so you'll do four of these and then just freehand i've just come in at the bottom and I'm just gonna curve it around like so and then come in from the top a bit further out because that's like the main drape and just kind of join up like so I don't want to pull it there we go and then with that one just flip it over and pop it on the other side of your square and just trace around it so that way you don't have to worry about you know getting them the same or worrying about getting them in the same place and then just cut that one out and then just use that again to trace on your next red square and that way you'll get them all consistently the same so that's those two and then get my square here and those two are going to stick like so well that's the top because that's the larger bit it's up to you how you want to do this like that and then just to do my little frame I've just got some green card here and just literally just cut whatever you want again you'll use any colors that you're using for your theme obviously this is mine because it's matching everything else and then just you can take them off but take a strip and just lie it across and then just with my pencil I can then snip that piece and just line it up with that piece. This is probably the fiddly, fiddliest part of this whole 
make. So now I'm going to stick these down first. Okay, and then I could probably have gone a little bit smaller. Maybe because it's taking up most of the window, but hey-ho, <laughs> I'm not too worried. And then just put a very thin strip of glue on the green ones and stick them across like so. Yeah, I did. I went a bit wide with that one. That one's better. See these ones, you can see more of the window, so I'll just move one of them around. But you may personalise this, you may have like somebody's age or letters or their name or you may not, you may actually die cut and put acetate in there and make proper windows, like there are so many options but now that one is going to go there. I love this, it's coming together so nicely. Okay so it's now the next day, I just put it to one side and yeah, just kind of just have a think about it and then I can go back to it again because it was, you know, it's taken a lot of time to get this where I want it. So I'm going to go through now the hinges, so to connect our little um, trains and carriages all together. And also I've got this piece here, which is going to be the decoration on the top here. So I've made this, just worked out a way to have this little kind of curved top which I think looks nice. And then I'm gonna make another one. This is just a prototype, you can see it's not even finished properly. But I've made this really cute little, um, uh, what's it called? Chimney, I was stuck with it last time, I still don't know what it is. Um, and that's gonna go here. And then I've just got this wadding from um, stuffing from a cushion and it just looks like steam and I just thought it looked quite cute so I'm going to show you how to make that as well. So first of all for this piece here you just want a piece of the craft card which is what I've been using and this piece measures five and a half by two and a quarter. It's the width of the square so whatever square you've done here you want it to be the width of that. And then basically I've just scored, let me just grab my scoreboard here and you just want to score at, so along the five and a half inch side you want to score at two and three quarters and at five, okay? And then you can see here I've already gone and distressed it all and then you just want to take little wedges off of your tab here and then you can see all the corners I've distressed everything and what we're going to do is this side here you're going to fold in and you're going to stick that over keeping it arched so you just want to join it and it will naturally fall into that arch shape so I'm just grab my wet glue and pop that over like so and just hold that in place make sure this is nice and neat because I'm actually going to have this bit on the the side of the train that's facing me because although it is the join and usually you have your joins facing away if you have this one facing away because you can see through this you'll see the join so you can see it there whereas if you have it facing you not only is it nice and neat, but it also is completely flush and there's nothing, you know, no joins or anything that people would see. So again, it's entirely up to you, you might want to do it another way, but I think that works well. Okay, and then you're just going to put glue all on the base here. Okay, and just take my lid here, and like I said, I'm sticking the side that's joined facing me. And it will sit perfectly over that square. If you just get your bone folder or a ruler or something and just... Pop it underneath there and just make sure that you get it all stuck down and all the glue and everything is all uh, spread out. And there you have it. Cute, isn't it? See, if I put that on there now, it's starting to come together and look like a little, cute little train. So this is the way I'm doing it. I'm not. This is not to say that there are not other ways. There are so many ways, but I just thought this was quite a nice way. Okay, so what I've got here is the same kind of sandwich as I've done for the wheels. So I've got a piece of black card stock and then I've got craft card. Now you can do black again underneath if you want, but I've just got the two layers. And I've basically gone and just die cut the small oval die from my, it's the smallest one in my nest of oval stitched. It doesn't need, it doesn't matter if it's not stitched, um, framelits. And this one measures um, two, uh, one and a half, one and a half by one. Okay, now if you don't have an oval, find something that is of that similar size and shape and just draw around it. Um, you can use a circle, but the only problem with the circle is they will be even closer together, if that makes sense. So the ovals obviously are longer, so it, it means your carriages have got more kind of room to move. So um, you may, if you don't even have an oval, then you can just have two of these that I'm going to... Well, actually you need more of all of these you need... You'll need two of them for this, two carriages on the train. For this piece next that I'm going to tell you, you'll need one, two, three, four pieces. 
but if you don't have the ovals then you'll need six pieces because you could use this in place of the oval there on top if I just bring it up you can see how I've done it underneath is these pieces here on top is the oval but there is no reason why you can't have that on top as well the oval just gave it a nicer finish I thought okay with this piece here what you need to do I'm just going to turn this on its side just so I can get my measurements so that was uh, three quarters yeah and it was one and a half one and a half so you like I said you'll need one two three four pieces of three quarters of an inch by one and a half okay and I like I said I've used the black and the craft card and just sandwich that together then on the back side if you just mark with your pencil at three quarters of an inch just on each side there so you can just see I've just come in here three quarters of an inch that side is what you want to stick your glue on. Actually, I want to stick it on the black because that's the side you're seeing, so I'll just flip it over there. I almost forgot, before you stick that piece down, you want another piece, which is three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter, and you'll need one, two, three, four of this. This is just the normal card on its own. And all I've done, take that one off, is just stuck it on the side, and you see here, it's stuck up, and it was just purely for, for decorative reasons. There's no actual, you know reason for it but I just thought it, it just gave it a little bit something and it just yeah I just, <laughs> yeah I just done it so I'm just going to stick it in the middle uh, about half an inch it doesn't really matter too much just stick that side down first and then just pop some glue underneath and then just fold it around and stick that down okay then with that piece I'm just sticking it right over the top because it's the same width well just about obviously cut that a bit short but you can just see now I just thought it just made that whole piece look a little bit more finished okay so once that's there and all stuck down what you want to do on each one is I just took wedges off of them like so so I just come in about a quarter of an inch in the top corner and just cut right down you can see there I need my little snippy snips get right into the even these ones will be better these ones are like a carbon steel these ones are really good there we go got it so you can just see there the shape I've now made and the reason I've done that is so that when this moves from left to right you never see the piece underneath okay then I'm just going to grab my little mat here and my pokey tool and I'm just holding it up there I've just lifted the mat up under my hand and just put a little hole this will just help your brads go through pull that out you can just see now just see the little hole I've just put through there and then you want to do that again on this piece here so come in about a quarter of an inch on that side and again on that side so you can just see again there there's my two holes and then I've got these little white brads which again I've had lying around for ages but it all worked really well for this tiny little ones and just thread each one through split them underneath and you can see now that moves and you don't see the piece underneath so that's that one and I need to put my hole through this one here Again, coming down about, about a quarter of an inch. Like so. Now, I mean, this is what I mean. You could have loads of carriages. You could have as many as you want. So once you, you know, you've done one, it's, uh, yeah, it's endless. There we go. So now I've got my choo-choo. <laughs> I love it and that one's going to go on the front again you can't really see but look how cool that is looking can't wait to put this out so just sit that all there and it is it should all be level it should all be yeah sitting nicely okay um, I'm going to go on to the chimney in a moment so that's those pieces then these bits here are all from 
Thompson's Craft Supplies and it is Cozy and Bright by Pebbles Inc and they're all these really lovely tags and I've got another pack as well. I'll send all the links and I'll, I'll send all the links, I'll have all the links in my blog. They've just got really really cool phrases and all kinds of tags and bits and pieces there. And I've pulled out these ones here because I actually think they're going to work. The colours are perfect and this I was thinking, I don't know yet, but I might have on the very front of my train like kind of curved like that. I also like the thought of having, if I turn it on its side, having this here. So it says candy cane wishes and mistletoe kisses and then I'll have all candy canes in these carriages. So that's my other thought. I've got my bells which I'm going to stick underneath my bows. I've got another bow here which I'm thinking I'm going to have up kind of maybe at the window or something like that. And then I've got these that all say believe, so I don't know whether to have them on there. So that's what I've done. I won't be putting these bits all on in the tutorial. I will just have all that in the pictures so you'll be able to see what I've done. So I just think that's it's easy that way. You don't need to see all of that. But now we will do the chimney. Okay, so to make the little chimney, you need a piece of black cardstock, which is three and a half by one and three quarters. Along the three and a half inch side, you just want to score at three and a quarter. So you're just creating a little quarter inch tab there and then rotate it so that that quarter inch tab's at the top and you want to score it one and a quarter and that will give us this half inch tab at the bottom which is what we're going to cut and yeah that will stick it all together. Then to decorate so I've got this piece which I'm going to have along the top and then a thinner piece that I'm having along the bottom. So the width is the same so they're both three and a half. To be fair that you will we're going to end up trimming it but I always like to keep it a bit longer and then trim it once it's all stuck but it will end up joining perfectly so it should be one, um, three and a quarter okay so you'll see what I mean when we put it together but I do like to have that little extra just in case something goes wrong and then the, the thicker one is three eighths of an inch and this little thin one is it's literally just under a quarter of an inch, it's like in between, but it can be anything you want. I just, I didn't actually measure it, I just cut a, th a thin strip with my trimmer. Okay, so that's what we need. Um, now, you don't really need to burnish this score line here along the long side, it was more like a guide, because what you're gonna do is, with your bone folder or anything, just kind of curl your cardstock, and then what we're gonna be doing is sticking it and you want to just stick it up to, so you can see where the score line is there. We're just going to stick that card over to that score line. So it's purely just a guide, you don't need to burnish it. The one on the bottom you do, okay, so just burnished it like so. And then we're going to be cutting some like funny little triangles. So what you want to do is take out the very end um, like rectangle, like so. All right, and then all the way along here, so first of all just cut that way, so take a wedge, and then you want to go from the, the corner up against the score line, so you've created this triangle. You see what I've done there? And then go along again, and then, and they don't have to be exact. Mine are about, a, yeah, about a quarter of an inch wide, each one. And don't worry if it's not a sharp triangle, it doesn't, but basically by doing this will mean that we can, um, when we stick it all together we've got a, a base to stick it down with rather than just having a, a tube that has no ends by having this little bit like this we can stick it down onto the top of our train so can you see there what I'm creating that so it's just like loads of um, teeth and I'm not yeah just it doesn't matter if they're not exact but that's what you want to roughly do you're basically just removing bulk and just pull those ones off. So that is what I've got. So now when we go around, we get this bit glued. So I'm just going to pop some glue along that tab. And it doesn't matter if you go over. You might want a thicker chimney. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just lining it up, pop my finger in both ends there and just stick that all down. Again, this and the like, little green strips that were on the windows are probably the most fiddliest part. Now you could, if you wanted to, because I did do this first, is have little squares here, but it would need to be smaller, and just have a small square and then a smaller square on top. You could use a little, um, a lady, she made one, 
with hers was all out of like toilet tubes and, and things like that and she used little wooden spools and she had a she painted one black and just had a very dinky little black spool at the front there and I saw that on Pinterest so you know there are other ways to do it but now so they're all sticking out like so but if you just push them all in you get a really nice obviously um, you know we've got our nice little tube there but also we've got all that now to put glue on and stick it down now don't worry if you cut up maybe past that score line because that's why then I've made Obviously that one's going on the top, but certainly this thinner one, it will cover any maybe little markings that you've got around the bottom there, because that's going to be stuck over the top. So with both of these pieces, you just want to just again kind of break up the fibres. This craft card, you know what I'm like with it, is so forgiving, I just love it. And again with that one there, and I before I forget, I need to distress those as well. So I'm just going to grab the same distressed ink there and I'll grab my mat. I've been really good this time and made sure I've been using my mat so I've not been getting it on my other mat which then takes ages to clean because I've got so many like cut marks in it. Everything kind of gets um, embedded into it now. Eventually I'm going to have to replace it again but um, I have to bleach it. <laughs> Who bleaches their craft mat? Me. So yeah I am a messy crafter. I just bleach my mat so that's my little uh, that's my secret that I've given it away. You always see it all looking nice and clean. It's not always like that. Okay, so that's those done. I've probably finished with that now. Need to get a re an, uh, yeah, refill for that one. Okay, so next I'm going to start with the one on the top. Um, and it's entirely up to you whether you want to add the glue to... I'm going to add the glue to this and just start from my join and just run, in fact I'm going to open it back up again because then I can actually hold hold it from this end which is so much easier like so and then again start from the back with the join stick it down, if you've got any mini little pegs they'll be handy now because you can just peg down it actually says let's grab one because I've got them right here look at these, these are dinky so I'm going to pop that one on the end, there we go and then I can just work my way around like so. I'm going to peg the other end even though I've not glued it yet because I just want it to all sit there in place while it all sets and dries. Okay so I'm going to leave that one there for the minute and go straight on to the bottom one here. And again I've got my little peg start from the back. Okay and I can take the top one off because I know that that's set and then that little bit there I'm just going to go in with my snips and I can just just line it up there. Perfect. You see now, so it's joined perfectly with that one there. Just keep that on there for a bit longer. Okay, so before I just stick all that down, I've just got a little, I think this is a one inch circle punch. If you haven't got one of these, just use your dies. Um, it is optional, yeah, one inch, but I think if I remember it fitted just over the bottom here. So if I take that bottom one off, in fact they can both come off now. But look how cute that looks. And fold all of these in, like so. Okay. And then you can get in that side obviously with your finger. But you just want to go around oh, and just add glue. It doesn't matter what it looks like inside because we're going to be adding that wadding onto it sealed. Now the reason I'm sticking this on first is because I just think it, it just again it just gives it that bit more strength but also it then gives it a nicer surface to stick it then onto the actual train. Okay how cute is that? And you can see the bottom there, still got a bit of glue to dry, but now I've just got a much nicer surface to stick it down. And then that's just that, you can see how much, just a tiny bit. I'm not even going to glue it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. Obviously, if you've got kids or any cats and animals and things that may well, then I would suggest that you want to put that, you know, tack it in place. But that's as easy as it is. So now I'm going to pop some more glue on this base and then just get it stuck down. So I'm going to have it just not really at the front but just set back about half an inch again just push my finger down there in fact I can probably stick it to a bit of the glue on the top and then just pull it up which now I've lost it inside there we go cute 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 because I've stuck it all together now I have to keep putting it on its side so you can see what it looks like 
but I just think that looks so cute. <laughs> I love this so much. I'm so glad that I've persevered and, and done this. So yeah, that is pretty much the tutorial done, I think, because that is going to go. I do. I think that looks really good then. The, the colours match perfectly. It's got the three colours that I've been using. So I just think that's, but then I don't know if that's too much with that sign on the front as well. We shall see, all will be shown in my pictures. I'm just gonna stick those with some hot glue, the little bells there underneath the bows. In fact, if I sit it like that, there we go, you can see it across the screen. So I'm gonna have these little bells like so. I think that might be a bit too much. I don't know, it does look cc and it does look cute. But yeah, I don't know, this is probably now going to take me days to decide this because I have to be 100% sure, but I think I'm sure about this one going here. Um, yeah, that's it guys. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. If you see anything extra, it will be very, very simple stuff. I might put some lights on the front and I'll be die cutting some Miri card with my... That was another idea I had, just with my hole punch. Um, I'll probably die cut a black circle, a white circle, and then a smaller one with this and have them as my lights on the very front. So if you Google cartoon trains, it will give you heaps of ideas in terms of putting it together. So, um, but yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've absolutely loved this and I'm so, yeah, so happy with this. And the nice thing is I can add more carriages to it if I want to. So yeah, it's, it's something that you can keep adding to if you want. This is great to do with your children, with your grandchildren, you know, any kind of school projects. I think it's a really lovely, nice little project. So I do hope you do it. Please share anything like this over on Mixed Up Crafters because you know I love to see them. And yeah, I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.